me those streets, I eat those all day. I don't sleep. Look, I don't even know what I got. Jesus, fuck them pillowcases and bed frames. I'll not take that. Don't need those. So high, I don't get high. I don't even know what I got. Weed for. Peggy, eighteen. Hi, my name is Ashraf Ismail, Game Director of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and I am excited to show you more of our open world locations and activities. This is by far the biggest and most diverse game world we've ever built. Over 50 major locations and more than 75 uncharted islands. In this demo, we will be jumping around to different parts of the Caribbean world and showing off some of this diversity. Here we are on Andreas Island, a coconut island with a pirate village. Up ahead, we have a tavern. Taverns are places where you can hire crew, pay for secret information about valuable convoys, you can play mini games, and of course, you can have a drink. To gain access to all of this, you need to prove yourself with your fists. Now that the fight is over, you have access to the tavern and its services. This being a tavern, there is always plenty of rum to be drank. But drinking too much will have some fun surprises for you. Now let's head to that viewpoint and sync up. Each viewpoint in the game is a small navigation puzzle to reach the top. Synchronizing unfogs the map, showing you nearby collectibles and activities, and it also becomes a fast travel point so that you can quickly get back here. The world is massive. We needed to make it comfortable and easy for you to get to where you want. These viewpoints are also an opportunity for us to show off how beautiful and expansive this world really is. Now we're heading to another important location, underwater shipwrecks. We are now able to access these locations because we recently purchased a diving bell. These are real 18th century devices that pirates and sailors used to access the underwater. Underwater is how the golden age of piracy started. Through an incredible hurricane, tons and tons of Spanish gold was lost at the bottom of the seabed. This attracted poor, jobless sailors and pirates to dive down and grab this treasure. It was important for us to include the underwater as a new environment because it was so important to the history of piracy. The underwater is full of unknown dangers and predators. You do have to pay attention and act quick, but the risk is worth the prize as you need a lot of money to get all the upgrades for your ship, the Jackdaw. Stealth is very important, even in the underwater. Here, we can use the seaweed and plant life to keep yourself hidden from sharks and other dangers. This is an air barrel. It's a one-time air refill, so use them wisely. Of course, you can always go back to the diving bell to refill. We are going to move to a different location now. This is a smuggler cave. This one happened to be accessed from the underwater, but not all of them are. Here, we ran in without looking around, and this got us in a little bit of trouble. But it was only two guys, and we took one by surprise, so not too bad. Caves are heavy stealth locations. Stealth is key in this game. We've put a lot of effort in to make it a valuable and exciting gameplay for players. Since we came from the underwater, Edward does not have his weapons or guns. You will have to use your stealth tools to get through this. 
Here, we will utilize the whistle to take out the brute. Any time an enemy is taken out, they will drop their weapon for you to use. Again, we are taking these guys by surprise and using their own weapons against them. Using just your fists keeps things quiet. This allows you to take advantage over the second guard. Up to this point, we've been doing a lot of pirating. This has attracted the attention of pirate hunters. This is fed back to you with the clashing swords above the health bar. This is a first level hunter after us. You can push the wanted system to reach level four where you have a fleet of intense aggressive hunters after you. The horn you heard indicates that this is a charger type ship. This ship is all about getting close and ramming. Each ship type has a unique sound associated to it, the scariest being the war drums of a man of war. Your first mate, Ottawale, is always giving you helpful advice and feedback. The chain shot is a stun weapon. Hitting ships slows them down. Great for stopping a charger's attack. As the masts come down, we can start a boarding. We need to take out 10 crew members to win the boarding. Of course, we can do it any way we want. In this case, since this is a smaller ship, the swivel gun is very efficient. There are many objectives in the boarding system, including destroying powder keg reserves and removing the flag from the top mast. But the most basic objective is to eliminate the crew. Here, you can see Edward utilizing his dual cutlasses and guns, combining them in counters and combo attacks. You do have a max of four shots before reloading, so make them count. Plundering a hunter allows you to send a very powerful ship to your fleet. They are also a good way to gain ammo for the jackdaw. In this case, we will use this opportunity to lower our wanted level. A very important new activity in Black Flag is harpooning. Historically, pirates harpooned as a source of income. Ready the whale boat, lads. Harpooning is a part of upgrading Edward and his gear. There are many different types of creatures to harpoon and they are all needed to get every single upgrade. This is one of the smaller harpooning targets. Just imagine taking on a great white shark or a blue whale. This one's dangerous. The harpooning activity itself has upgrades and you will need them to take on the bigger targets. You can upgrade the health of the rowboat, the number of harpoons you carry, and the damage of the harpoons themselves. This was just a tease of the activities and locations. There is tons more for you to experience. Thank you for watching.